Good morning, and welcome back to the Chapel of St. James Episcopal Church here in Danbury, Connecticut, for our service of daily morning prayer for May the 23rd, 2021, the feast day of Pentecost. And today we are celebrating this major feast day in the life of the church with this multilingual service this morning, and also with an in-person service of evening prayer at 4 p.m. out on the lawn of the church, which will feature today our St. James Ringers, the bell choir. Now please note also going forward that mask wearing at outside events at St. James Church is now optional and that the building's facilities are going to be open for use during our upcoming outdoor worship and social events. Now for the next three Sundays, we'll have parish leaders providing these 9 a.m. worship services for you while I'm away on vacation. And when I return, we will hope to begin live streaming indoor Sunday morning worship just as soon as possible. So stay tuned for announcements and updates. And one final reminder that today is our deadline for gathering in donations for updating St. James sprinkler system. So this is your chance to own for yourself a bit of history and sponsor a sprinkler head replacement or two or four. You will be welcome to keep your own decades-old sprinkler head that you replace, perhaps for a gift for that special person in your life who truly has everything except for a sprinkler head. So now, in thanksgiving for them, in thanksgiving for our church, and in thanksgiving for the wonders of this holy day, oremos. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. 
Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Alleluia! The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia! We continue together with a portion of Psalm 104. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. C'erano the modern Judei di ogni nazione, sotto il cielo che vivevano a Gerusalemme, che a questo suono la, la folla si radunò e rimase in spalo il dita. Perché nessuno si divideva parlare, però la lingua non aveva di ciascuno. Pero estos que están hablando, ¿acaso no son de la región de Galería? ¿Cómo es que los oímos hablar en nuestro propio idioma? Los que estamos aquí somos de diferentes países. Algunos somos de Partia, Media y Elam. Otros venimos de Mesopotamia, Judea, Capadocia, Ponto, Asia, Frigia, Panfilia y Egipto y de las regiones de Libia, cercanas al pueblo de Sirene. Muchos han venido de Roma, otros han viajado desde la isla de Creta y desde la península de Arabia. Algunos somos judíos de nacimiento y otros nos hemos convertido a la religión judea. Es increíble que los oigamos hablar en nuestro propio idioma, de las maravillas de Dios. Hepse shashken ve shashkenda, bebir lerne, bunne anlama geliyor, dediler. Ama deyilere kuchumse de ve, yene sharap larla dolular, dediler. Pedro, porum, ponjusi empe, como sonzi, Levantó a voz y dice ellos, 
varois judeus e todos os que habiteis em Jerusalém, seja vos isto notório e escutei as minhas palavras. Estes homens não estão embriagados, como vós pensais, sendo está a terceira hora do dia. Mas isto é o que foi dito pelo profeta Joel. Dans les derniers jours, dit Dieu, je reprendrai de mon esprit sur tout cher. Vos fils et vos filles prophétiseront, vos jeunes gens auront des visions et vos vieillards auront des songes. Oui, ce mes serviteurs et ce mes servantes, dans ces jours-là, je reprendrai de mon esprit et ils prophétiseront. Yo kommer at visa under i himlen av en octeken på jorden nedan, blod och all ett rökböcker. Solen kommer at vendas till mörka och månen till blod innan den stora och halliga dagen får jag kommer. Och alla kom som prekela i förhållanden när de kommer att rädda. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Canticle 21. You are God. You are God. We praise you. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. 
the noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the wind and cleanse. Convert and consecrate our lives to our great good and your great glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If I were to try and distill the gospel message into its simplest, its purest form, I think it would sound something like this. God exists. God is real. God was and is and ever shall be. And the nature of God, the, the essence of godliness, is what we English-speaking humans would call love. Like all those unfathomably massive celestial bodies that are out there in the universe that are invisible to our eyes, but that leave signs of their presence, their influence all around them, so too is God's reality something that we can detect around us and within us in our experience of love. 
But unlike anything that our fragile and frail human hearts and minds can grasp or imagine, the love of God is infinite. It is eternal. It is unmerited, it is unearned, it is undeserved, it cannot be exhausted, it cannot be destroyed. Now made in the image of God, as we all are, we humans, we get to experience an, a copy, a facsimile of the love of God in our own messy lives, in our own imperfect relationships. It's not the perfect love of God, but it's the best that we've got. And if you've ever had the experience of loving someone or something so truly, madly, and deeply in this world that you could just break down into tears from the sheer intensity of that feeling, that, that care, that connection, why right, then you know. You know that that sense of love, that is just about as good as it gets here on Earth. There's nothing more powerful in all of our human experience than love. And that was the truth that Jesus Christ came to earth to reveal, to show, to point us towards through his, his words and his deeds and his death and his resurrection. And yet as familiar as that experience of loving and being loved is for us, never fails to ama amaze me how disruptive and surprising and, yes, even shocking God's astounding and am amazing and perfect love is whenever it is revealed to us in all of its glory. We've heard about such revelations many times over in the Gospel of Jesus. But today, we are, we're told that it's happening again on this day in Jerusalem on that first holiday of Pentecost after Jesus' ascension. The first, I think we must be clear about what exactly it was that was so extraordinary about what happened on that day. I mean, was it, was it because the message of God's deeds was so unprecedented? No. Not really, because there were already heaps of such stories of the wonders of God's power all scattered throughout the Hebrew Scriptures. Or was it because those particular messengers, the apostles of Jesus, was it because they shared the good news with such incredible skill and persuasion, maybe with golden poetic language that was just dripping with verbal honey? Mm, I don't think so. No, I think what was so remarkable about that movement of God's essence, God's spirit within the crowd gathered around the di disciples that day was this. As different as they all were, from Asians to Mesopotamians to Judeans to Egyptians to Libyans all the way to Romans, reaching across all those different regions and languages and cultures, as diverse as that gathering was, everyone there was hearing one shared truth spoken directly to them in their heart of hearts. And not just that. That spirit of truth was reaching into their deepest and most honest sense of self. It was, it was piercing through whatever pretenses or facades they might have raised up over the course of their lives in self-defense. Spirit was coming to them not through the words of a familiar or a trusted confidant. It was coming to them through the lips of a stranger. It's the most profound revelation of God's truth, God's love, of God's power. It came to them across boundaries of language and of tribe and identity. The Asians, no, the Asians, they were not gently being evangelized by fellow Asians, nor the Romans by fellow Romans. Because really, where's the wonder in that? Where's the power in that? Now, if God were going to come into the world and turn everything upside down with that revelation of a truth that, that could pass through all of our social walls like a curtain of mist, why, God, God was going to have to go big, go bold, go broad. And that's exactly what happened on this day of Pentecost. Today, God's Spirit began to be poured out upon all flesh, 
just as the prophet Joel had prophesied. Salvation, reconciliation, redemption, reunion, all, all of them manifestations of God's love through human vocabulary. All of those raced through Jerusalem that day and they were then carried out into the whole world and all across time. All the way up to this very moment, this online gathering of ours, this anniversary. So happy anniversary indeed, dear church. Celebrate well today. Gladden your heart, recharge your batteries, rest your voice, because the full Pentecost story has not yet been finished. Because the Spirit of God that blew through Jerusalem on this day long, long ago, it has never ceased its movement. That message of love that is real, that is possible, that is divine, that is unfailing, that is determined, that is forgiving and patient and, yes, firm, that love of God still draws us Christians together week after week after week. And that love of God is the very same that sends us out, willingly or not, out into the world to share our best imitation, our best expression of, of God's perfect love for our own thoughts and words and deeds. Now, sometimes that's not so hard, like when we share that love with, with those that we care about, with those that we already know, that we already trust. That's sort of the soft baby food of Christian evangelism, showing love to those who already love us back. But if the Feast of Pentecost teaches and reminds us of anything, is that the truly astounding, astonishing, amazing manifestation and experience of God's love, those occur when, when truth is shared across human boundaries, across our divisions. That uncomfortable, tingling sensation of God's love passing through us like a current of electricity that most powerfully happens when acts of love bridge a greater distance than just those between family and friends. Like when we take loving risks to our own precious and our fiercely protected comfort zone. Like when we expose ourselves to the possibility of some measure of awkwardness and a little vulnerability. Like when we let the words of God's Holy Spirit pass forth from our otherwise clenched lips. And perhaps even more importantly, we take part in the continuing wonder of Pentecost in our own time when we open ourselves to that possibility that God just might be waiting to work on us, on us most profoundly, most transformatively, through the words and the actions of someone who is far, far, far beyond our own circle of like-minded and like-experienced and like-affiliated familiars. Now I realize what I'm saying is against our human nature in many ways. A default mistrust of outsiders, it has enabled our human civilizations to survive and thrive for thousands of years. In terms of basic survival, all of these boundaries, our postures of defensiveness, they have served our social evolution quite well. But Pentecost is not about social survival of the fittest. No, Pentecost is about theological evolution. Pentecost is about traversing the limitations of our human nature and seeking to more closely align ourselves with the nature of God. Now, Orthodox Christians, they have an ancient word for that practice, that behavior. They call it theosis, the transformation that we humans can experience of becoming more like God, more in union with God's self with God's essence, with God's being, in a word, with God's love. Now, is that theosis a difficult process? 
to commit ourselves to? Absolutely it is. Does it press against all our current obsessions with factionalism and tribalism and isolationism? Does it reject all of our urge to demonize and distrust and segregate? For sure it does. Does it singe our precious egos and irritate our pride and chafe at the edges of our sensitive comfort zones at times? Definitely. But it's the love of God that surpasses all understanding. It's the love of God that has summoned us together on this Pentecost Sunday. And so I say, let us move forward together as a renewed Pentecostal people. Let us make our way along that path of truth, that way of Jesus, one loving step at a time, one loving act at a time, one loving word at a time. And God willing, God willing, with our Lord Jesus guiding us up ahead and with the winds of the Holy Spirit at our backs, God willing, may we too be wondrously, astonishingly, astoundingly amazed at the love that we will leave behind in our wake. Amen. We continue together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, on this day, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. 
shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. for the church and the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Atiende nuestra súplica. Give us a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Du amaze den Leyen. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially Janice, Becky, Lloyd, and Michael, as they celebrate birthdays this week. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Also, nossa oração. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Chris, Roja, Gretchen, Joyce, Susan, Dom, Eileen, Dakota, Ron, and Jay. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. 
Lord, in your mercy. Écoute notre prière. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.